I am Lawrence Chuno, and this is Doing Jazz. Hello everyone and welcome to Doing Jazz. My name is Lawrence Chuno and this episode is with violinist and composer Majid. Majid is a classically trained violinist who has worked with a diverse range of household names in the music industry, including hip-hop artist Mr. Cheeks, actor and singer Keith David, and jazz trumpeter Winston Marsalis. Majid's new album is titled Sound of a Flower. This album, with a solid jazz foundation, draws influences from soul, hip-hop, and classical music, giving rise to an infectious sound that is uniquely Majid's. The song playing in the background is called Bundao. During my conversation with Majid, you'll hear the songs Up and In, Black Star, and Be What You Want. These songs are all from the album Sound of a Flower by Majid. After listening to this episode, you can learn more about Majid by going to the website of the show, www.doingjazz.net. Uh, you can listen to more episodes of Doing Jazz by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the available podcast vendors. While on iTunes, please rate the show, leave a comment, and share the show with your loved ones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I present violinist and composer, Majid, in your case. Majid, welcome to Doing Jazz. How are you doing, Lawrence? Thanks for, for having me. I'm good. good. Thank you. Thank you for being able to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've been, <laughs> we've been chatting for like an hour. We have Which been. is good. So we've been warming up. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about um, setting up tours. You're not playing it right. out of the city right now. Yes. Do you want to talk about some of the things that you have coming up in terms of live right. performances? Oh yeah, well, certainly the things that I have in the books right now are, um, many of them are local. I have uh, the Green Sofa Music Festival, which is in Queens. I have that uh, in July. Mm -hmm. I have um, several private events in and around the tri-state area. But um, as of late, we've been getting quite a bit of radio play outside. Yeah. So um, I've been in touch with people in Oregon, where we've been getting a lot of radio play and uh, some individuals, even Hawaii, which is great. I actually awesome. would love to make it out to Hawaii. I haven't been there, but yeah, we're in the I process. <laughs> yeah, we're in, we're in the process of setting something up okay. uh, out there with those people. And so, hmm. yeah. Nice. Good. I was uh, researching you, reading up a little bit about you mm -hmm. <laughs> after yeah. listening to your music. Nice. Um, and I see that you've been associated with a lot of some some well known names in yeah. the in the industry, uh, yeah. and they are very diverse too. That's yes. one thing I I like about it. Like oh, you have you. somebody like Kit David. Oh yeah, yeah. You've worked with him, yes. Mr. Cheek. Oh yeah, he's yeah. on the album, Mr. Cheeks. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then Win Winton Masalis. Oh yeah, Winton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like Winton. People from everywhere. So yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about? Do you have like, the question? Would be Do you have any particular experience or a set of experiences that um, people you've collaborated with that you think you that is memorable? Maybe you yes. learned a lot from them or something. Well, like certainly Winton is. You know, he's a huge influence on me. I mean, mm -hmm. not just compositionally, 
but uh, early on in my education of jazz, when mm-hmm. I was learning how to play jazz, um, I started really focusing intensely on the art of jazz and learning and, and just understanding its roots and all of that history wise. And mm-hmm. when I was about a sophomore in my undergraduate at the Juilliard school mm-hmm. and uh, a good friend of mine, who's also um, he, we've collaborated with for years, Charlie Porter okay. was uh, taking lessons with, with Winton mm-hmm. and he would go up there all the time. And then one time he was just like, Hey man, you know, let's, I'm going for this lesson. Why don't you just come on up with me? Mm. And so when was this? Yeah, this was, it was around probably, let me say, I, I want to say like 2000, Okay, literally 2000, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, I would go up there and, uh, he would just be teaching and then, I just started after that, just going up myself. Mm. I would go up, and then he would just, he would sit. He'd be practicing the piano, and he or composing something, and he would sit and he would tell me, he would teach me basics about mm. about jazz. I was already kind of this. You would go to his house. Oh yeah, 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 wow. yeah. He had a lot. He always has um, students over. You okay. know, and he, he has, lived in in New York then. Yeah, okay. he still lives in New York. Okay, he like in, lives, in Harlem or where? I believe he lives in the village right now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't been to his house in a while, but he okay. used to live in Three Lincoln Center Plaza, right oh, next nice. to Juilliard. So literally, like right after class, I would yeah. just like just shoot over to his house, and so we would be up there, and he would just give me like little pointers and uh, mm. just teach me what it really meant to be a jazz musician. And um, history wise, yeah. number one, but also structurally, what are the most important aspects of jazz that makes jazz unique? Mm-hmm. You know, so he he really helped me with mm-hmm. a lot of stuff and you know i would also independently study yeah but he was a huge influence on me oh, nice. um, wow. some some other people that i had memorable experiences with um as far as collaborations are concerned mm-hmm. um certainly my first record my very first record mm-hmm. was a, a a huge um experience for me because on that particular recording i had had had, had the late great john blake jr um john blake jr for those individuals who don't really necessarily know him super well he was a well-known jazz violinist and he was my teacher as well Mm. but um he played with mccoy tyner and he played with uh, grover washington and he had his own band that you know made hits with uh, all types of R&B stars and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so he was a, but he was my teacher. Mm. And so, you know, I would take lessons with him and this one situation came about and I said, Hey, you know, I let him know, Hey, uh, I'm going to record this album. And he said, Oh, great. I'm glad that you're doing, you have, you know what you're going to record. I said, yes, I have all the arrangements and all that ready to go. And I said, I, I, I would like for you to produce it. Mm. And he was like, Hmm. I'll see what I can do, you know, Mm. and then we worked it out, you know, it was a back and forth and negotiations and we came to a, an understanding and he was there, he was on the scene Mm -hmm. and his son was Mm -hmm. on the album Mm -hmm. playing the drums, Jonathan Blake. And Mm. for those people who are jazz fans and jazz, uh, you know, enthusiasts, they know who Jonathan Blake is. You know, and uh, Ivan Taylor, who used to play with a uh, wingspan with um, as well a pianist by the name of uh, Eric Lewis, mm-hmm. who won the Thelonious Monk competition, who's also a dear friend of mine mm-hmm. and some others. Charles Porter's on it. and But um, that was very memorable because yeah. I felt having John there, John Blake Jr., that mm-hmm. is, uh, in the studio, working it out with me. Um, I learned a lot. Of course, um, there was more to learn, of course. Yeah, but, uh, yeah there's always more. Yeah, it, right? <laughs> yeah. isn't that funny? <laughs> it's, it's an endless cycle. But I have to say that he, um, he, he started me off. Yeah. It was a good start because nice. I felt I needed someone who could have my back. Mm-hmm. And he was there. Nice. He had my back, so... After that, you know, I just simply uh, found others that were like-minded and Mm -hmm. went forward with uh, recording and doing the things that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, 
I've enjoyed it since. Yes. It's been it's been well worth that's good every effort <laughs> yes that's good and i mean it's manifesting um in like he, this album I, like I, I i couldn't stop listening to it <laughs> nice i'm yeah, glad i listen I'm glad. to every track I, I listen to it at least three times i oh, usually nice. i usually do but in this case i really enjoyed it oh, um, i'm glad i'm glad so the question is uh why i think you you've told me a, a little bit on the background of this album yes. it didn't just happen now it, it it's taking a while oh it you has. Know? yeah oh, so yes. do you want to talk about oh yeah the sure. process yeah. sure you know um right after i did my first album like about a year and some change later mm -hmm. i um it was like around the time when my my daughter was being born mm -hmm. um my wife was pregnant and my daughter was being born and i thought this is a really scary time right here mm -hmm. this is a scary time so i immediately got to the piano heard some things wrote those things down and that became what came from that particular day where i wrote the title track of this album sound mm -hmm. of a flower mm -hmm which was an, is an orchestral piece of music mm -hmm. um, with the solo violin. Um, basically, the rest of the album was born from that. Okay. Now, in my first album, The Basilisk, okay. um, I was kind of starting to toy with the hip-hop thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when I jumped into Sound of a Flower, I already knew that I was going to go even more deeply into the hip hop thing because mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a child of the of the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 80s 90s hip hop, yeah. that's like the golden age of mm -hmm. hip hop. Mm -hmm. It's when it was all being formed and formulated and it was all top quality. Yeah. And so um 2000s has great hip hop too. I mean, hip hop right now is 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 good stuff, but that was when there wasn't much uh, you know, money involved, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of spirit in 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 community involved. Yeah. So that's my reference for hip hop. So mm -hmm. it's in my bones, and you know, growing up and being in around Harlem in the Bronx, where my family was and where I where, where I grew up, mm -hmm. I had to come back to it. Yeah. But the way I, I as 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 a friend of mine says, the way I was coming back to it was through the jazz door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I came through the jazz door with hip hop. Mm -hmm. And so I started to build the album around a few specific concepts. Sound of a Flower, the reason why it's called Sound of a Flower to me um, is because as the spring arises, yeah. you get green shoots, you get buds. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly see the bud turn into a small flower, then mm. a larger flower, and it grows. Yeah. It literally grows as the season progresses mm -hmm. before your eyes. And I thought that the music should grow in much the same way. Mm. Um, that when you first discover it, it's like, whoa, what's this? And then as you observe it and you watch it, different stages seem to blossom and, and make them make itself make themselves present to you. And so I felt that and you alluded to this before. Yeah. You said, um, well your album's pretty diverse. I said because it's really the growth of the music mm -hmm. from progressive jazz to other types of jazz that yeah. have proliferated since then. And now I'm in the stage where it's fully bloomed. Mm -hmm. The music that I make in post Sound of a Flower yeah. is kind of the music that's kind of post, like at the back end of the album, middle of the album, mm. forevermore. Um, Boondow is kind of a, mm -hmm. you know, kind of hip hop, yeah. blended, yeah. not straight ahead, not, you know, uh, so much progressive straight ahead jazz mm -hmm. uh, where you have the, the traditional swing pattern yeah. but now we're improvising still and we're still throwing the blues and we're still making sure that it has a very um, distinct you know uh, flavor to it which yeah. makes it jazz but at the same time we're making sure we're opening the door 
to this new avenue, yeah. this new, uh, you know, this new era in the music. And mm-hmm. so that's what Sound of Flower, Sound of a Flower is. It's, it's the great, key great. to my current, yeah, yeah <laughs> my yeah. current musical output, mm-hmm. quite mm-hmm. literally. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I really like the metaphor of the flower that you talked about. That you, how the flower blooms and it kind of grows and it's almost like we're seeing it grow yeah. and yes kind of grows we kind of grows into us even sometimes it sure know. does yeah it sure does yeah and um that's what some of the tracks on this album does to me like it's yeah. a song like up and in oh yeah yeah that's one of my favorite so oh far, yeah. i'm glad i'm glad i'm <laughs> yeah, glad i like the intensity and yeah. i like the fact that it's growing and it's branching into everywhere just going everywhere yeah uh, fearlessly and yes and <laughs> yes so that's a soulful tune i like yeah. that tune it mm-hmm. has that new orleans kind of feel but it also at the same time has almost like a southern rock type vibe mm-hmm. in it too mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know like for those people who, yeah who like like the Almond Brothers and yes, you know that yeah. Southern rock, yeah. you know mm-hmm. that Leonard Skinner type mm-hmm. vibe. Mm-hmm. It has kind of that. I really did want to be honest on this album. So um, for those people who are jazz purists in the sense, uh, I respect you, but my musical journey has been very diverse. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm a classical violinist from a very young age and then I'm a a jazz violinist and, you know, trained. Mm -hmm. All of this is trained. But also, you know, I grew up in the 80s where the hip hop was there. But I also in part of my life, I was in Long Island growing up and they were listening to Guns N' Roses. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to Guns N' Roses. <laughs> I was listening to Green Day and I was riding, driving skateboards. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, like yeah. I like to say my music is a strong reflection of who of I am. Who you are. So some people have, you know, because music these days can be... Uh, one thing Mm -hmm. you know and some people feel uncomfortable with things being more than one thing Mm -hmm. and uh to those individuals it's cool yeah those (laughs) those things are on my album too yeah Yeah. yes yeah Yeah. (laughs) all those things that you want Mm -hmm. they're they're on the album too Mm -hmm. so yeah you know if you don't like track one and two you're gonna like track three and four yeah like the the different tracks i like yeah they're kind of all different i talked about opening the the next one there are three of them i want to talk about next one is black star oh black star oh yeah i love black star too black stars um to me um when i was in middle school yeah i was like eighth grade seventh eighth grade Mm -hmm. i had a um a band I had a rock band. I was in a really? rock band. Yeah, I was in a rock band. And, um, you know, we tentatively, we wrote songs. Mm-hmm. We tentatively, you know, got together and, you know, I played, uh, you know, I played the violin, but we played other things as well, you mm-hmm. know, auxiliary percussion and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, in my rock band, 
you know interestingly enough i was unaware it was named genesis mm. I, I was unaware that there was actually a band already named genesis but <laughs> i was a kid yeah. <laughs> i was like this is a cool you know yeah. so you were the leader of the band yeah okay. well i was one of them yeah okay. i was one of the guys writing songs okay. and so this is my rock star moment mm -hmm. this is black star is i feel what i wanted to this is I, I wanted to come to rock I, mm -hmm. I was really coming to rock and roll and the lens that i came through with black star was um i always with my partner on trumpet charles we always like really contrapuntal things okay. you know, classical music yeah. stuff coming in yeah to play bach you know that influence mm -hmm. of that contrapuntal sound um, do you want to describe Contrapuntal a little bit. Yeah, I kind of know a little bit about it, but yeah. I want people to. Well, con contrapuntal is where you have a, one main theme, yeah, and then you might have other complementary themes mm -hmm. um, that are not necessarily always just the harmony. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, let's say we have a little. We'll have the first theme be the violin, and then mm -hmm. the second theme be the the trumpet. These guys will at some point play the main melody mm -hmm. but also at the same time also then at some point play the harmony yeah and they kind of go in they interweave mm -hmm. constantly throughout the melody mm -hmm. uh making it uh very very complex yes very interesting mm -hmm. but um for me that contrapuntal sound is what i was going for but right under it, mm -hmm. I was going for like almost like the drums was doing kind of like a, a James Brown, you yeah. know, you know, <laughs> you know, like yeah. some funky, funky drummer, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like some real James Brown type slide and slippery and the mm -hmm. bass was under it doing some, you know, just a lot. But it was really coming off that that James Brown funk vibe. Mm hmm on top of this you know i mean i'm right under this uh yeah. this this really wildly contrapuntal thing yeah and the guitar open guitar with the with the distortion mm -hmm. you know mm, it's awesome. really like kind of a thing and so it gave it again yet again that kind of jam band kind of quality at times but it was you know black sauce black music rock and roll this is it's what it is mm -hmm. Jimi hendrix this is this is you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is the influence so yeah. i was going for yeah. it you did know. you guys put out anything what did you guys record yeah we, is there any recording of that band of that band yeah that's the, the band actually we recently for my cd release Oh, you mean my first, the Genesis? Yeah, the Genesis. No, <laughs> we were too young then. No, we didn't get to any point. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. My Garage Band okay. never made any records. Okay. No. Although yeah. the, the the members of the band they went on to for at least a couple of years yeah. to try to pursue some musical mm -hmm. things here and there. One guy was like trying to be an R and B star or whatever, and yeah, but it never <laughs> yeah, turned into anything never. for them. That's fine. And yeah, I mean. <laughs> music isn't for everybody. Isn't for everybody, yeah. it really isn't. Yeah. I mean, especially when you start dipping into this music business. Yes, people start disappearing quick. Yes, so, <laughs> like then you realize you got to make it, how make much? a living. Yeah, you're like, what? I'm getting paid what for this gig? <laughs> I don't know. I might have to go get another job. <laughs> and so, yeah, so so they, yeah, they they're doing other things, but um, and we never recorded, but okay. you know. I yeah. still remain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I was always a musician from the beginning. Those guys were like inspired later in life. I'd been I taking see. music I lessons see, yeah. since I was five. So I see. I see. I'm a, I was a musician yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there's an, one other track I want to talk yes. about. Be what you want to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Be what you want. Yeah. Be what you want. Is it what you want? Just what? Be yeah, what be you what want. you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, be what you want. Be what you want. That's cool. <laughs> I don't know how I added be what you want to be. <laughs> be what no, you but want. Yeah. That's basically get, what I, it that's is. Basically, yeah. That's basically <laughs> it. Be what you want to be. Yeah. But, you know, be what you want is a is a song literally to myself. Okay. I'm singing. I wrote the song. I wrote the lyrics. We came up with the hook. The raps are from those rappers, Mr. Cheeks, mm -hmm. um, Craig G, who's from the legendary group Juice Crew. 
I mean, these guys are legends. Mm-hmm. Like, like Craig G is a legend. Legend. He's still rapping. Mm-hmm. He still does tours. Year, you know, year around. You know, he might be touring 150 days out of the year. You know what I mean? Like, he's really still doing it big time. And he's one of the founding fathers of his music. You know, still good. He's not even that old he's he, he's not an old dude mm-hmm. he's like the same age as is he, he's like a little bit like two or three years older than Nas that's mm-hmm. it <laughs> he is I mean remember the hip hop is a young yeah. music yeah, it's yeah. not that and old the, the, the people who were yeah. geniuses back then making yeah. inventing hip hop they were really young when they were doing it they were yeah, they very, were very young, young. they were like he, teenagers it's funny so you said now that. they're in their 40s <laughs> it's funny that you said that because Craig G made his first album I believe when he was 16 <laughs> 16 or 17 yeah. he, he was asked mm-hmm. to go on the road with Molly Mall at I think 17 mm-hmm. so this guy's still young and yeah. chilling and doing his thing mm-hmm. and so uh, as well as Squalor Orphan who's a uh, Squalor Orphan has been with my band and done things. We've done a whole mixtape together. We've done, we I, I play on his shows. Yeah. He plays on my show. We actually going to be doing a show literally this Saturday. He's going to be on my show June twenty third at mm. the Mercury Lounge. Yeah. Um, but be what you want is a song to me about choosing, making a choice, and really believing in the choice that you made um being in whatever situation it is that you are in if you've made that choice that that's what you want sitting firmly in the decision to be what you want Mm -hmm. and to have fun doing it Mm -hmm. no matter what people say no matter what curveballs you get no matter what um you know this industry is strange as well mm-hmm. you'll have people closing doors on you yeah. you can be really good at what you do mm-hmm. and people will not put you in the place where you might see yourself or where you could potentially be mm-hmm. all because something that happened um who knows like 20 years ago or 15 mm-hmm. years ago they ran into you in a in the <laughs> grocery store and you know, you said something. You were, ki- <laughs> hey, I, I have stories. I tell you, Lauren, I have stories with some people in this industry that I grew up with, who tell me stories about being rude. Because I started, I did my first gig when I was like sixteen. Yeah, I was a kid. Mm. I was a kid. I was still like self-absorbed. Yeah. You know, not to say that I'm not. I mean, now. better I'm every kid. Culture. Every, yeah, every, every kid is, like, is self-absorbed. Yeah. But I have had people in this industry, in this business make a decision upon who I was mm-hmm. when I was 16 yeah. and I run into them almost 15 years later yeah. and they still looking at me they're with the same bigger. look yeah. and I'm like I'm confused like hey I've grown yeah. from them <laughs> but guess what though yeah. guess what though yeah. I'm sure there are people who met you back then right. who liked you and they, they're making positive decisions based on what they see back, what, what they saw back then. Yeah. So it's it's like sometimes it's just a wash. You just got to take right. the positive and roll with it. That's you pretty know? much, yeah. and that's the reason why I made the song. Nice. Because in the end, interestingly, those people, I still see those guys mm-hmm. that were, and they're still still giving me the weird face. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to sit firmly in the decisions that I've made in my yeah. life. I have to take the good with the bad Mm -hmm. for my life. Mm -hmm. And that's what this song is about. Um, This is the type of song that you definitely want to have your kids listening to. Good. This is why young people need to hear this. Mm -hmm. They need to hear it because I feel um, today's climate with Instagram and all that, it's all about people liking you but not always liking you for who you are. Mm-hmm. Liking you for something that they want you to be and you just simply fill yeah. in the order. Yeah, or what they think they can get from you yeah. later on. In and life. this is yeah. all about truth. This is all about being yourself. Mm-hmm. This is all about being honest with who you are so that you could have fun with your life while mm-hmm. you're here. Yes. Because yeah. we don't stay here forever. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick yes. fake break. Yes, of <laughs> okay. course. Yeah. Of course. You are listening to Doing Jazz with Lawrence Chuno. 
The guest on this episode is violinist and composer Majid. His new album, Sound of a Flower, is available for download and streaming. All right, we're back. So, Majid, yes. where are you from? I am from New York, New York City slash Long Island. Mm-hmm. Um, very early, I lived in the South Bronx. Okay. Then I moved to Long Island when I was um, about like fourth or fifth grade. Mm-hmm. Moved out to Long Island. There, I got, you know did my middle school, high school, elementary school deal. And then I, for college, moved back to the city, New York City, Mm -hmm. to uh, study at the Juilliard School. And when I was at the Juilliard School, as soon as I graduated, you know, at the Juilliard School, I was in the dorms. I was in the Mm -hmm. city. And then when I graduated, I was, I moved to the Riverdale, the Bronx. Mm. Still, I'm back in the Bronx. Yeah. So that's where I live. Riverdale is a cool place. Yeah, it's a a nice area. It is a nice area. It's a good place. I teach at Manhattan College. Oh, do you? Yes, I know. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. It's calm. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a lot of trees and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, Actually, fun fact for those people who are, uh, don't know the Manhattan boroughs. Yeah. The Bronx is the greenest borough. Mm. In New York City. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thinking about it, yes. Yes, it's it the is. Greenest borough. Yeah. It, yes, is. it has the most grass and yeah. trees mm-hmm. in it. So mm-hmm. like Fun Van Cotland. Yes. Van Cotland Park. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's acres and acres. Yeah, acres oh. and acres of green. <laughs> green. But um yeah, so yeah, I'm 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 a Bronx I'm a Bronx kid in yeah. a lot of ways. I'm a Long Island slash so Bronx wait, kid. Wait, sorry. You do you live in Riverdale now? I do, yes. Oh, Hmm, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the Bronx. Yeah. Because do you know Elio Villafranco? Yes, I've heard yeah. of him. He's, yes. a, he's a pianist. He's a pianist, right? Yeah. Well, I just, Cuban guy. Yeah, I just spoke to him yesterday. Did and you really? Lived, yeah, he lives in Riverdale too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I think I've seen that guy around. But I've, I've seen him perform and all that. Uh, I should yeah. probably I should probably talk to him. Do you take I, the one train? Yeah. Take Maybe I probably have seen you a bunch of times. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. It's but possible. now we yeah. know. So yeah, yeah. So yep, yeah. the one train to yeah. two two thirty two thirty two thirty first. Two thirty first. Take okay. the bus yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Seven yeah. bus. Yeah. I take I take the one train to two thirty eight. <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah. Well, I used to live on two thirty eight too, and I used to walk over. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah to Waldo Avenue. But anyways, okay. um, yeah. So that's that's my where I grew up. Mm-hmm. But uh, I went to school Long Island. Mm-hmm. My musical education was largely in a place called Harlem School of the Arts, where okay. I now teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, my daughter goes, she's nice. uh, a student at Harlem School of the Arts. But um, yeah, I teach at Harlem School of the Arts. I teach in the South Bronx also at a middle school mm-hmm. called uh, Kip Academy Middle School, okay. where I, uh, I'm there with a, another wonderful drummer and jazz He's a jazz jazz musician by the name of McClenty Hunter. Mm-hmm. He's uh played with Kenny Garrett and all those guys, but we're 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 partners teaching mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. um yeah, I mean I I'm a New York guy, but I'm definitely a Bronx. I'm I'm Bronx to the core at this point. Yeah. And yeah. the music I I wanted my music to really reflect my honest influence and uh so my version of hip hop yeah is a little less r&b than robert glasper mm-hmm. <laughs> i see yeah I see. robert glasper is for those people who who want to make the comparison yeah. of where i stand in terms of the hip hop fusion aspect mm-hmm. of things my music is way more yeah boom bat new york they're going to go listen to it yeah. and whatever you explain is not going to matter to them. If they like it, they like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're going to be true. like, yeah, you just keep talking. We love this shit. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Nice. So they're just going to like it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it, either way. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like, I like it's more direct. I like yeah, that, yeah. that approach as far as that's concerned. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So for, just having spoken to you for a while now, I yes. discovered that this good stuff that you're putting out is not you didn't just wake up and say okay i'm gonna write some really cool music and it's not just all music it comes from life experiences and everything yeah Yeah. do you have um uh and you can answer this question however you feel like you can decide not to even answer the question and just talk about something related to it Uh, but do you does your life how has your life experience influence your music yeah you can give examples well you can yeah um well 
for me, my life experience has shaped my musical experiences. Uh, first, if we're going to talk about the album, yeah. I explained it earlier. Yeah, yeah, Sound yeah. of a Flower, exactly, the birth yeah, of yeah. my daughter, uh-huh. <laughs> literally... <laughs> That was born yeah. before her, yeah. and it's an homage to her. Yes, yeah. We actually have a, a small movie, small movie that we put together okay. for that video, and it shows my daughter and the whole story. Mm. It's a really wonderful We I think okay. we're probably going to submit that to a film festival. Mm, nice. It's that good. You know, it's on my uh, on my YouTube page, but okay. it's it's unbelievable. It has over ten thousand views. Nice. You know, people really dug it, and so. Um, but yeah, you know, okay. uh, another example. <coughs> I used to be when I was young, mm-hmm. also in a breakdance crew. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I I won a couple dance competitions in a couple day camps, you know. Yeah, I, I, I you spinning on my head, spinning on my back, spinning on my hand, doing windmills. Yeah, I was getting it. <laughs> so that hip hop, hip hop stuff is in me to the bone. Yeah. So it, it you know, just like the orchestral stuff, like mm-hmm. you know, Sound of a Flower itself and other pieces like, you know, um, chants yeah. that i did mm-hmm. those orchestral pieces are from my training as a classical musician mm-hmm. and the harmonization the reharmonization mm-hmm. of that is from you know but hard times and just really embracing that yeah is what develops all of this music yes and one of the things that i really believe in and it's funny because like i said just this morning i got off the phone with my one of my partners, uh, my, my musical partners, and we decided to do a third installment of the Sufamato mm-hmm. mixtape and really push that to uh, a specific. See, I'm still crowd. amazed. Sorry to interrupt you, but I'm so amazed that a jazz musician is talking about mixtapes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that is what we sh- we should be. We shouldn't shy yes. away from that. Jazz musicians Absolutely. should do mixtape, throw in everything, let it not be too polished. Like yes. it can just be unpolished. Put it out there. Call yeah. it a mixtape. We don't yeah. have to wait to do an album. <laughs> well, know? hey, hey! I told you in the time that yeah. it took me to do one, in the time that it took me to do my album, that album that sound of a flower yeah it, i did two mixtapes mix and i put them out that's good so that's they were good. out yeah <laughs> so people have never been people have never been saying to me hey man where'd you go oh well you yeah. didn't see that mixtape yeah. oh yeah man oh it's got a lot of views mm-hmm. people are listening to that mixtape mm-hmm. they love it so i'm about to put out another mixtape mix and i have yeah. another one yeah. that we already recorded and it's a mixtape that's um in collaboration with a Brooklyn rapper by the name of Dime a Dozen. Mm-hmm. We did that. We recorded that about two years ago. We're yeah. literally about to put that out, mix that down, master that, and put that out. Mm-hmm. It, it this year by the end of, by Christmas, mm-hmm. you guys should have three projects that I put out. That's good. My album, this Dime a Dozen and Majid collaboration album, yeah. which has ten tracks, I believe, mm-hmm. and the Sufamato Symphony Volume 3. Yeah. And um, we just trying to, yeah, we just trying to get this stuff out yeah. into the matrix and into yeah. the ethos so folks can mm-hmm. have it. You know, yeah. and I play the violin. Yeah. And I, I'm doing jazz, but I'm doing hip hop because actually strings mm-hmm. are all up in hip hop. Yep. They're yep. all over. Yep. You'll sooner find a bunch of strings mm-hmm. than you'll find horns yeah so in that way that's my entry point mm-hmm. people are not like what you playing hip-hop violin yeah. hip-hop jazz violin no they're like oh yeah, yeah. you're doing hip-hop jazz yeah. violin yeah. if you just say hey man you just playing jazz violin oh that's interesting yeah now, what's that <laughs> you mean like stefan grappelli <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. no, yeah. no. By the way, you yeah. know, Stephanie Grappelli is if French. If people like your stuff, none of them, then all oh, this is not going to matter to them. They're just going to consume it. This is true. It. They're just going to listen true. to it. And I, do to make, it. Yeah. I do make American music. <laughs> yes, I do make exactly. American music. So yeah. <laughs> like when people say Stefan Grappelli, yeah. I love Stefan Grappelli, but he he's not American. He's yeah. French. <laughs> so I make American music. Yeah. So if you know I'm playing the violin and I'm playing jazz, mm-hmm. 
it's not going to be yeah. a la Stefan Grappelli for me. Yeah. yeah. So some others? That's but, some of that. But for me. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I asked you a question and we, we, we kind of I don't deviated, know. but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I have another, another question I want yes. to ask you. Yes. Um, do you have any advice for young musicians? Oh, I man. always ask this because wow. um, I didn't start, I, when I started playing music late. Okay. You know, and sometimes I envy people that started really early. Right. You know? Yeah. So, and, and I feel like now if you ask me in, if I have any kind of advice for young musicians, I right. wouldn't, I wouldn't have any good advice for them. But I feel like you, you'll be in a good position to. Yeah. <laughs> give them well, I mean. It could be young musicians. It could be just I, musicians starting out. I'm a teacher. To, yeah. I, I, I give advice Mm-hmm. All day, every day, right. <laughs> on music too. Yeah. So I could definitely, I could definitely give the advice. Now, if I had to speak to a young musician, what I would say is, there are two things that you should never lose sight of in music. Mm-hmm. The first thing is love what you do. Love the music itself. Love the process of creating the music. Love how it makes you feel. Love how it makes others feel. Mm. Love music. Mm. That's the first Mm. one. Second one is, do not be afraid to express yourself through the music in whatever way you want Mm. to. Mm. And the reason why I say that is simply because um, music is a business. It is a business. In doing business, you don't really want to find yourself making music just to make money. Mm. Because the market can be fickle. And just when you've spent all of that time riding this wave, another wave comes up and washes what you're doing. If you're riding waves, Mm -hmm. don't ride waves. Follow your passion. Now, if your passion happens to coincide with a wave, (coughs) then more power to you. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. However, if you ride waves and you don't have a passion for that wave, yeah. it's not going to fulfill you and you might not even be rewarded for it anyway. Mm-hmm. See, the reason why I say love yeah. and passion and all these things is because music is one of those things that you could be putting a pile of money into it. Yeah. You could be putting a pile of effort into it. And the reward that you get might not be monetary. Yeah. It might not be in millions of fans. It might not. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Depends on how you make music and what you're making music for. Who you're making it for or all of that. There's all But if you're making it for yourself, you'll always be successful and you'll always find fuel. If you're making it out of love, you'll yeah. always find fuel to continue to make it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nice. That's very important. Yeah. So Awesome. Yes. I like that. I like yeah. that. We got a little philosophical for a moment there. Yeah. 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 Sorry right. about that. So it let's happens to... occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's try to conclude with this fun little game. Sure. I call it Turn Up Mute. All right. I'm going to give you two options. You're going to turn one up and you're going to mute the other. Okay. All right. But the caveat is that whatever you turn up, it doesn't mean that. Well, or whatever you mute, it doesn't mean you don't like that thing. It right. just it just means that for now right. you're just feeling the one you you turned up. Understood. All right. Understood. These are tough questions. Okay. Understood. So, okay. So pay very close attention. Cool. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with it. All right. Yeah. Jay Z, Nas. 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 I'm okay. turning up. All I'm, right. I'm muting Jay Z. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear why. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, why Nas? For well, now. Yeah. I mean, Nas is my favorite rapper. Okay. He's just. He's always the way he talks. Yeah. 
always speaks directly to me. All right. Uh, Jay-Z, great picker of beats. Mm-hmm. He, his production, his music that he raps on is really amazing. Mm-hmm. His raps, to me, and his voice yeah. are not always my uh, okay. favorite thing to listen to. to like, listen his to voice you. is a strange, he has a very strange yeah. voice to me. Yes, to me. yeah. He's got he's he's very lyrical and he's great. Mm-hmm. He's great. We don't want to be confused. Yeah. You know. Mm. So, yeah. That's uh yeah. Okay, no. I want to deviate a little bit. I want to talk about a Long Island rapper. Um Yeah. LL Cool J. Okay. From Queens. From from Queens. Oh, he's from Queens. My bad. My bad. That's, that's cool. <laughs> I thought he was from, from Long Island. No, 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 no. He's from Queens. Yeah, he's from yeah. Queens. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, Next question, okay. um, teaching, composing. Which one do you turn up? Which one do you mute? Um, you have to choose one. I do have to choose one, right? Yes. Um, How do you feel? Let's, but let's make it easy for you. How do you feel today? How are you feeling now? <laughs> oh, this right period now? of time. Oh, yeah, composition. I'm t- composition. I'm turning composition okay. up. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm turning teaching right. down. Okay. School years yeah. is a wrap, and the summertime means is now it's time yeah. to I, get, get busy with get the compositions. Busy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And school uh, teaching can be very yeah. tiring and frustrating. Sometimes. Well, but yeah. I, you know, I still compose when yeah. I, I still, I still write music mm-hmm. when I'm teaching. Mm. I never stop writing music. Yeah. I always write music. I just I do sketches. I sing into my phone. Yeah. I fill out. I finish tunes at nighttime. I play tunes like my. My um, so one thing about my band, yeah. the cats in my band, one they could they could tell you, every time we have a gig, we play new music. Mm-hmm. Now we have some steady things that we do, yeah. But literally every time we play a concert, there's at least two minimum tunes that we play that are new. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I've kind of prided myself in being as a guy who, uh. You know, I just keep I keep the water on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never turn the water off. Mm-hmm. I keep the water on yeah. simply because uh, it keeps me honest mm-hmm. with what I'm doing. Yes, it keeps me honest. If if I turn it off and I'm just looking for gigs yeah. and I'm just trying to milk those <laughs> two or three tunes that I got that I know everyone likes, yeah, then I'm not being honest. Mm-hmm. I'm being a, a businessman. Mm-hmm. I'm not being a musician. I'm being a businessman. Yeah, and uh, it's cool being a businessman. Yeah. You got to be a businessman yeah. sometimes, you know, you know, but I like to keep it balanced. I like to keep the water on mm-hmm. creatively. And then I also have to on the back end deal with the business aspect of things, mm-hmm. which is uh, the business aspect. Reason why I keep the water on is because the business aspect is up and down. Yeah. You know, depending on what city you go to, depending on what situation you're in, what concert you're in, yeah. you could be playing to a packed house and then zero people the next time. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that way. Mm-hmm. But if you keep the water on creatively, you know that every time you link with your, your band, it's going to be magic. Yeah. So yeah. it don't matter what happens on the business end. Yeah. The music end is going to always reward you, which yeah. goes back to my whole love question. Yeah. I'm loving this music. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop this music mm-hmm. no matter what I'm doing. Dope, dope. Yeah, I yeah. Must say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Real All talk, right. real talk, <laughs> real, real talk. talk. Man. Yeah. Right. The last question. Yes. Um, two choices. Uh huh. First one, all sun. Yeah. Bondoa. <laughs> Bundao. Bun, Bundao. Is bun, it Bundao? Bundao. Bundao. Yeah. Okay. Bundao. All well, Sun or bun, Bundao? Well, All Sun, these are two, two of your songs. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, All Sun is a piece also I wrote for my daughter. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm, turning, I'm, 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 I'm turning up Bundao. Okay. I'm turning up that Bundao and I'm turning down the All Sun okay. for right now. All right. So in concerts, you're gonna more all sun is hard as rocks to play. Mm-hmm. It has like a hundred and twenty one chord changes in it. It's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> like I was in that headspace, mm-hmm. but it's just a hard piece to play. Yeah, it's a challenging. You have to. Mem- one guy was like, one of my friends was like, "Man, how you memorize that many chord changes?" I was like, "Man, this is a challenge." Mm-hmm. And then playing it is a challenge because it moves and yeah. it bounces and it changes key signatures mm-hmm. and stuff. And it's it's a fun tune. It's kind of a jazz nerd tune. Mm-hmm. And I feel I'm getting out of that stage in my life. 
mm. being a jazz nerd. Yeah. I'm getting into just being a musician yeah. and playing music and creating music that the vibe is consistent in something that I could really kind of just mm. access and deal with regularly. Yeah. Yes. And Boondow, I'm psh, Boondow, that's my morning music. That's cool. That's what I'm what, about to work out. Why is that name? Oh, Where's yeah. the name from? Well, it's actually the full title is Boondow Funk. Okay. Now, I have to admit, um, Boondow is a word in Brazilian, which means uh, rump, booty. Okay. Booty. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, when when I think of Brazil, I think of that Boondow, that, okay. that booty. Yeah shaking in mm-hmm. them dances and so it was a kind of a funky kind of let's get to our feet kind of song yeah. so i just went straight for the boom down and in haitian yeah. actually for my haitian brothers stop i say yeah. i'm not haitian but you know i got mm-hmm. a lot of peoples who are haitian that I, you know i love yeah and they love me and we we, we family and that boom down whoo they, lo- they love that boom yeah, down. Yeah, that boom down is everything for a lot of people. So I figured I'd just go okay, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's funny. I ran into a Brazilian guy. He was like, Is that boom down? That boom down? <laughs> I was like, Is that boom down? And he was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was so embarrassed, but I was laughing. I was like, Yeah, it's that, that's what it is. Nice. It's what it is. It's, 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 yeah. It's a dance song. It's a turn up song. It's mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. Something to get your booty moving. Yes, that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, quickly. Yes. Um, I'll be remiss if I don't ask you about your name. Oh, yeah. 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 It sounds. It's Muslim. It's like. Yes. Majid is a Muslim name. Majid Khalif, is yeah. absolutely a Muslim name. Yeah. Middle Eastern, whichever Middle way okay. you want to say it. Okay. And so, you know, during. Um, 60s yeah my uh family which are we identify we are mixed black people okay we are we identify as african americans okay we converted my mom and my dad converted Uh to islam oh okay from uh you know various types of christianity which uh is uh uh but i am i was a cultural muslim meaning Mm -hmm. i grew up uh okay you know kind of with the prayers and all that yeah Um, but I'm I'm a non-practicing Muslim now, but, nice. but the name is still a glorious it's name. Nice, yeah. And so that's why it's funny. I was looking for band names many many years ago, yeah. and the trumpet player in my band was like, "Man, your name is Majid. Yeah. Like your name's not like Robert. Yeah. Your name's not like Joe or John. Why don't you just name the band your name?" Man. I was like, mm. "I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna name the band Majid." You know, you know, in jazz, that's usually. You know, first and last name. Mm-hmm. I just went with the first name because yeah. okay. it's just so unique. Yes, it is. It is. It you is. know, and it's a powerful name. It is. I, th- I'm, I think. I think my parents were giving me a, a, a strong name That's good. to live up to. Yep, and you're li- you're definitely living up to. I oh, appreciate you, brother. <laughs> appreciate you, yeah. Majid. This has been so fun, so much fun. Yes. Um, I hope we can get to do this again. I uh, do. It, it doesn't have to be when your album drops. You right. Can, Whenever you can tell yeah. me you want to sub that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We could just hang. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Go to a concert together, you yeah. know, check That's, something out. Yes. Yes. Vibe. Definitely. Make music. You make you music. Go. Definitely. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way. I like to do Great. that. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you. I appreciate no you. All right. <laughs>